Boom, what's up guys, it's your Bobo Boys, I know like again when I'm the banger. All right, in today's episode, I wanna talk about something that's been bugging me for quite some time. I wanna talk about the, the difference between 10-bit and 8-bit color, 420 and 422. What are the differences? Uh, what's the file size difference? Um, how heavy is it for your computer? Color signs behind it and everything. If you're interested and if you're a Sony shooter, stay tuned and let's get it. First things first, let's talk about the file size. I think that's the easiest thing. When it comes to 420 and 422, 10-bit and 8-bit, I feel like there's not much difference. For example, if you shoot one minute video at four, uh, in 8-bit, then it's gonna come up to like 1.7 gigabytes. But if you shoot at 10-bit, uh, it's gonna be like uh, almost 3.1, 8.9, 3.1, something around there. It also depends on your shot, how it's like dynamic range and all those things, right? That's the difference. I wouldn't suggest like thinking about it too much because nowadays everything is like one terabyte, two terabytes, so it won't be too much of a difference unless you're shooting a wedding or something for some something for your client for a whole day, like a 12 hour shoot, you have a lot of files. I wouldn't suggest you to go 422 with 10 bit because um, you want to save space. I have two 128 gigabytes. And if you don't have a DIT, keep uh, like dumping your footage, then you'll have a, a, you'll have a lot of trouble. So if you're shooting all day, then stick to 420 8-bit. Otherwise, there shouldn't be too much of a problem if you're having a one to two to three hour shoot, just stay, stick to 422 10-bit. All right, second one is a color science, color difference with 422 10-bit and 420 8-bit. You should watch John Andon's video because he talked about more in detail in his video where it's a difference, what is the difference of 444, 422, 420. I'm just gonna talk about from my experience, what I found working with those um, files. All right, first one is, from my opinion, is the biggest thing is when you shoot both the files and you bring it to DaVinci or Premiere and you add a lot, like a phantom LUT, right away you will notice you just put side by side and you will notice that the 420 is more magenta sony's been known for their color science not as like they're not as good as canons or i think fuji's i think but it just blew my mind when i did that one time when i tested it out and you can tell right now i'll, I'll try to add some b-rolls and stuff like that you'll tell when you shoot 420 and you shoot 422 on 10-bit and 8-bit if you add them side by side, you will tell right away that one of them more magenta. Just don't do any color, uh, any don't touch any like luminary colors or anything like that. Just add a lot, you will tell right away that one is more magenta than the other one. Obviously, it's a fixable, it's not a big deal, but if you just wanna get it done with your job and you know, just add a lot and that's it, just slightly uh, adjust the colors, I would suggest you're shooting a 420. If you have a short film, commercial, music video, documentary, or anything like that, stick to 422 because it will give you better color signs. Yeah, first of all, it's not gonna be as magenta. Second of all, it's just you have more space to work with colors if you wanna change the uh, hue, saturation, or anything like that. But if you have a quick four hour shoot for some kind of a client who, I don't know, any kind of a client, or talking hit video, or anything like that, just keep to 420. First of all, the file size, second of all, it's easier for your computer and all those things. There's gonna be slight change in, uh, like I said, in magenta colors, but it's nothing too hard to change it in Premiere um, or DaVinci colors. Just slightly to move the tint, add a contrast, highlights and all those things. You know, it's, it's still doable, don't get me wrong. It's still doable, but if you're shooting more of a higher budget videos, then I would suggest you stick to 422. The third one is the file. How heavy is it for your computer? So my computer is 2020 MacBook Pro fully specced out is just i know i just bought it right before m1 came out what a dumbass but it's fully specced out and should be like running bodily smooth with a lot of videos but when i shoot 4 to 2 10 bit i shit you not if i shoot more than 30 frames this thing does not handle it like 30 frames it's it's that's the most it can handle after that 60 frames if you add a color like if you add just a layer of color it is done it's just light you can't even see anything it's so annoying when it comes to like editing I feel like it's the worst thing because while you're editing, you want to be in the mood, like keep going, everything should work smooth and fast. But if something slows down, then you have to render in and out and all those things, it's just gonna make your editing nightmare. And I hate about that. So when you're shooting 4 to 2, 10 bit, make sure your computer is good enough like to render. Otherwise, if you're someone like me who's still with an Intel, you'll you'll have a quite a lot of trouble with it because um, the codec, uh, Sony codecs are, are not as massive as ProRes's. Like for example, I'm shooting ProRes on Atomos, right? The file size is so much larger, so there's a lot more information, but what Sony does is brings all the information and squeezes it in one and it becomes super hard for your computer to read it. So when it comes to that, I feel like I'd rather ditch the 422 10-bit and just shoot everything 420 because sometimes I feel like my computer is about to fly. It just makes such a 
loud noise that you can't even focus on anything. And first of all, the computer's slow and then that loud noise and everything. I'd rather not shoot anything 422 and just keep a 420 because of those reasons. But if your computer is good enough, like M1 or anything above that, I would recommend you to shoot 422 because you will have a better uh, color science and everything. But I think it's still 60 frames per second will be quite slowed down. Outside of that, that's the only reason that I most of the time I choose 420. When it comes to editing and you want to sit down and edit one to two hours, you don't want your editing to get interrupted. That's the best thing to do for my opinion. That's what I found. And you still have enough range to play around with your uh, with your shots, play around with your uh, videos, colors and stuff like that. All right guys, that's all I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope it was helpful. I hope you guys learned something from this uh, video. I've been learning everything from my trial of error kind of thing. I've been shooting a lot of videos. Sometimes I'm shooting 422, sometimes I'm shooting 420, depending on, like I said, music video or talking head videos but lately i've been shooting a lot of 4 to 0 because i personally find that working best with my workflow because of my computer you can still work around with the colors and stuff like that even on the 4 to 0 you can still push them and you can still edit them even if it's a little bit magenta if you know your colors you can bring them down or play around with them so at the end of the day hopefully i hope this video was helpful and if it was as always thumbs up if you liked this thumbs up if you loved it and i'll see you guys on the next episode ciao